given where your career started, did you think that you'd be here today? Definitely not. <laughs> I think when I look at my entire career, I have such an interesting perspective because when I came out of college, it was 2002. I've seen it come a long way, and now you have four female athletes doing their own thing, starting their own company. Just knowing that things that you achieve in the pool can impact people outside of your sport is something that's really special, and to know that we can do this together and elevate women's voices, which is I think is something we always wanted to do as athletes, but to do it as a businesswoman is like really special. It's just been such an incredible thing to experience and watch it grow and see how many people we've affected in a positive way, especially, you know, young female athletes has been so amazing. I think we all probably had dreams of becoming professional athletes, but like I never really dreamt of being a businesswoman because there was like, you just never really had like a role model like that or never were like, I can do both. crazy that we're all here for the first time since we launched together our company which is really cool to say and it's been a year we're changing that narrative of what a female athlete can do can be and I think a lot of times we're looked at in like we're compared to our male counterparts right and, and a lot of people look at successful athletes from that male lens and what they've accomplished and I think it's interesting how they, they don't really view us that way society doesn't but now that's really starting to change and that's where this all comes into play so Alex and Sue you definitely have been in sports longer than Chloe and I okay um. <laughs> not off to a good start Ooh. there Simone Ouch. <laughs> no, but you are a legend so it's okay <laughs> I just want to know how are female athletes covered and has that changed recently, especially over you guys' experience? Dramatically? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's totally different in, in, in all the good ways. I feel like we're all very aware of how it's been documented. It's only like 4% of the coverage goes to, to women. Obviously that was the reason for, for why we got together and did what we did. I could only imagine that early in my career it was like negative 4% <laughs> if I had to guess. In the world of women's basketball, like we get sized up by dudes all the time. It's just a constant like, oh, I'd be, a, if I was in the WNBA, I'd be average, I'd be an all-star, I'd be a double-double, I'd be this, I'd be that. Oh, you can't beat me one-on-one. -on -one. It's always about how they could beat us. It is really frustrating. I think it says more about them than it does about any of us and like what we do. When I was growing up, and I'm sure it's the same for you guys, when the playing field was level in terms of like puberty, we we're just as good as athletes as guys. Like there's no difference, there really isn't. No, the difference was we were probably way better. We were probably yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't like it. I mean, yeah, yeah. Literally. And the other thing that's different is how female athletes now are allowed to kind of be who they are. There's not, you know, I feel like for a long time there was like a mold and it was just them trying to like cram you in this mold of what they thought a female athlete should look like, what they should say, all, you know, all of the above. And I actually think back to like, even as recently as the 2015 World Cup and the 2019 World Cup, and I feel like in 15, we wanted to celebrate and party and whatever, but we felt like we still had this standard to uphold, just being a role model and carrying yourself highly and being a good spokesperson. 2019, we're like, we just won. We deserve to party and celebrate. What's wrong with having beer and champagne and like all the rest of it, you know? And, and people probably like loved it. I mean, I oh loved God, it watching. Yeah. What about you guys? <laughs> in your short experience. I mean, I think the biggest release for me was in the past couple years, I just stopped trying to fit that mold, right? That we keep talking about, like, I just held myself to this impossibly high standard of how I should behave in public and privately as well. And it kind of just destroyed my life and my mental health. And so over the past couple years, I was like, all right, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to do whatever I want to do, be who I am. And I just am in such a better place. And I think that inspires others to do the same. So I think it's just been like an amazing surprise personally. I mean, personally, just being a black woman in a predominantly white sport, it's just like, I have to be like 10 steps ahead of the best white swimmer. Yeah, so how would you explain the opportunities and have, have you seen them change? I feel like for other people it has changed, but not necessarily for me. Being the first, you know, to win that individual Olympic gold medal, it's like you're the person that, you know, they quote unquote say breaking the glass ceiling so you have more cuts and bruises. So I know that my experience is hard, but my, my hope is that my experience will make it easier for the next person. Bringing more minorities into the sport is a big deal. And 
I just don't think that that is necessarily appreciated. And I think that is kind of like a microcosm of culture. It's like in our world, women aren't appreciated, but also in our world, black women aren't always appreciated. Women of color aren't always appreciated. And so it's, if it's the same way outside of the sport, it's also the same in sport. And so like, of course, I'm working to hopefully change that just as much as other people are outside of sport. I feel like because of you, there's so many black girls that are going to get in the pool and gonna wanna swim like competitively. For me personally, you know, snowboarding's predominantly white for sure. And um, just growing up, it, it felt really isolating. I mean, obviously I got second place at my first X Games and I, that was kind of the first time I really felt it was when, you know, the girl who got first, she was white and she was getting like so much praise, so much love. And I was told to go back to my country that I was taking medals from other white Americans, just nasty comments when I was 13. And that was just so hurtful. And I think that's kind of when I've experienced moments of like racism and hate because of something that I had no control over. Like there's nothing I could have done about, you know, the color of my skin, the way I look. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely had isolating experiences. I mean, I've been at the top of the podium and there's been comments like, what is she doing in our sport? I'm like, who is our? Like, like, who does this sport belong to? Like, swimming's for everybody. And I know exactly what they're referring to, but I think it's also different when you become really good at a sport where you're one of few. People don't want you at the top. Like, they don't care if you're at the bottom, but when you're at the top, it's <laughs> it gets real dirty and nasty. So I think that it definitely was isolating for me. It still can be isolating for me at times because you just don't see many people that look like you and that's what I want in the sport of swimming. I just want more diversity in the sport um, because it is fun and it should be like a really loving sp space for everybody, um, but that's just not always the case. I would rather be the one to go through it than, you know, another 13 year old who like finds her success at an early age or like just even later on in life. There were times where I was like, I can just go do another sport. Swimming is not it. Like, but yeah, I just want to know like what kept you going through, through that time. Honestly, I don't even know, right? I mean, it started when I was 13 and I feel like that was the worst time to deal with it. Cause that's when you're like you're a teenager, you're figuring you're out who you are, like puberty, yeah. all this stuff. And then I'm dealing with that as well. Honestly, I think I just kept going because I just felt like I didn't have a choice. Like I loved snowboarding and I didn't want to give that up because I was getting hate and racist comments on everything I've ever posted or done. The other thing too was just that I was really silent about it. I mean, there were times where I would cringe if I won a contest. Like I couldn't even be happy. I was just bracing for what was to come. And that was so hard. Like my parents have walked in on me crying myself to sleep every time I won a contest because it just sucked. Like I hated that feeling so much. At the end of it all, I just had to like stop looking. Like I had yeah. to stop looking for those, that negativity and just continue to surround myself with positivity and good people. But I mean, I can see it getting better for me at least like just been getting much more support just telling my story right like kind of going back to being authentic being yourself and just like sharing your story not hiding anything not fitting that mold has helped a lot with you know just dealing with people in general so I kind of joke sometimes like I say tongue-in-cheek like you know the whole term shut up and dribble and I joke I'm like I would have loved to <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to have shut up and dribble I would have loved to have been able to play basketball you know, get paid, you know, our value, have a successful league and all these things and not have to fight. Cause obviously that means that we're being valued. I would have loved to, but that's not what the reality is for a lot of female athletes. And I think what's interesting is you brought this up just now and it's very similar in the WNBA because we are league full. It's like eight, 75 or 80% women of color. It's a very high percentage of people in the LGBTQ community. It's women. It's like all the things in society that are marginalized and held back. And that right there shows you that we are this like glimpse into what, what is going on in our society. It's like a, a huge, a, a big glimpse. And now that all of us are starting to like stand up for these things, are starting to speak about them, we're not shutting up and dribbling. It is interesting to see how we actually can 
create change. Like we are moving the needle because of it, you know, because we're actual like living examples, you know, of being marginalized in those ways. It's really taking the microphone and being like, okay, well, we are the more, we are more than just an athlete. We can do so much more. And now that you've kind of opened that door, we're gonna like slam it open and make sure that it never shuts again. Well, even like take your equal pay fight. I mean, you know, there's like, people in my life who aren't athletes that use your guys' story as ways to kind of like attack that in their own lives, in their own jobs, having nothing to do with sport. <laughs> it's really powerful to share your story. Um, I think personally for me, it can be really hard um, because people don't like to hear that I dealt with racism in the sport of swimming. It's like people don't want to face that experience or validate that that experience could exist for me. And so it's really hard sometimes talking about it because oftentimes I know that people don't believe me or they're, they're unwilling to believe me. And so sometimes I feel like I'm talking to a brick wall, but also at the same time, like you said, I know that I'm helping someone else that looks like me that may experience, unfortunately, some of the same things I did to keep pushing on to their dream and hopefully getting to the top of the podium like I did. I think, I mean, I loved what you said earlier about the one that breaks the glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. Because you guys are who you are, how you carry yourselves, all that stuff, because you are the firsts. It is like that. You are going to have more bruises, more cuts. And I think that us having these diverse stories that maybe aren't always elevated really gives people voices um, and makes them feel seen. And so I just want to know, like, what do you guys, I guess, feel about you know, us telling these diverse stories? and how it's impacted people. I think storytelling is very important. I feel like my family and I have the very typical immigrant story, right? Like leaving Korea, South Korea and moving here to the US and like I was born and raised in the US and then I worked really hard and became you know, a professional snowboarder, which is super random. But at the end of it all and after, you know, my first medal at at the 2018 Olympics, like people started to know who I was and then they got super inspired by my story. Like even parents, I think, you know, like Asian immigrants tend to be known as tiger parents or whatever and like forcing their kids to just be really good at school and like go be doctors or lawyers or whatever. But my parents took a completely different avenue and like wanted me to be a professional snowboarder because I loved it and just supporting me in that way. So I think just like, you know, back to being authentic and being able to be ourselves. I think that in itself just really inspires a lot of people and can bring a lot of positive change. Um, just by even people like seeing, seeing these options, like seeing these different ways to approach life and um, getting inspired by these stories that are told and shared. That's where I feel is so great about Together because yeah, we're, you know, we're four athletes and obviously we're super dedicated to our sport, gold medalists, like all the accolades, but we're also like human. And we also have like our own respective like families or like likes and dislikes outside of our sport. And we all come from different backgrounds. Um, so I think just the impact that we can have aside from like, oh, I wanna be the next Alex Morgan or Simo Manuel, like there's so many opportunities I think that we're just giving girls and women to kind of look at themselves and like gain some confidence and like a path forward that they might have not seen otherwise. When I was like 14, 15, I was randomly taken to um, a US Women's National Team game and I saw someone who looked like me and I was like, that could be me one day. And so knowing how that impacted my life, knowing how that kind of changed how I saw what could be for myself, I think what we're doing is just you know, with the team at Together is putting out all these see it be it's, not just in sports, <laughs> you know what I mean? It is the culture, it is the lifestyle of things. It is, you know, maybe not, maybe it's not even inspiring somebody to be a soccer player or a swimmer, you know what I mean? Or be a snowboarder, it's not just that. It's like, oh, we're gonna show people actually like this young lady started this TikTok dance and this is why she didn't get the credit. And it's like opening people's eyes as well. So we're inspiring, we're educating. And that to me is like, that's the secret sauce. And I think that's what makes it all so special. We've already, I think, just set together off on the right path and already made um, such an impact in so many girls and women's lives, um, mine included, just to be a business owner, an entrepreneur, um, a founder of a co-founder co of a company with three other amazing women. Um, I mean, regardless of the on-field accolades, like you guys are all just so incredible and 
Um, I value each and every one of you just as humans. And with the differences that we all have, just coming together and sharing kind of one common goal is really great. So thank you guys for being on this journey and um, enjoying the success of Together. And I can't wait to do this again. Thank you. Next time we have drinks. Yeah. Yes. <laughs>